Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Jenny with Digitally Twisted Media. Thanks for stopping by again. So today let's talk about some comics. Specifically, we're going to talk about a short little mini-series of comics. It is a team-up of Vampirella and Dejah Thoris. So this mini-series consists of five comics. And in this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about issues one and two. So I stumbled upon this comic a little bit on accident. <clears throat> I'd been reading the Dejah Thoris um, series on its own for a little while after I got done reading The Warlord of Mars. And I was really interested in, you know, maybe if there was more that was going to happen with John Carter and Dejah Thoris. Spoilers, there's not. The Dejah Thoris comic series takes place way, 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 way before Warlord of Mars. Anyways, we picked up this Vampirilla team-up, um, kind of on accident, thinking that it was just the next Dejah Thoris issue, but it's its own little series. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts about it. I was a little bit unsure um, going into it about what it was going to be like. My initial impressions, just looking at the cover of issue one, as we see here, and actually, I'll probably just put it up on the screen bigger so you can see it. Um, it looks kind of aggressive. It looks like Dejah Thoris and Vampirilla are fighting to the death, and obviously very scantily clad. But I was a little bit skeptical. Um, you know, Dave and I were talking before I started reading it, and we were saying, oh, what do you think it's going to be about? Do you think it's going to be like, you know, that they're fighting? And I was like, no, they probably maybe fight for a second, but then they become besties and team up against everybody. And sure enough, that's what happens. The main theme in this comic, at least as far as the first two issues go, is sort of a man, or in this case, woman, versus nature type of theme. And also, you have the single heroic woman who is kind of taking it upon her own shoulders to save her planet and her people. There are also incredibly strong feminism themes in these comics. I'll talk more about that in a little while. The main story starts out, though, where the scientists, the astronomers on Dejah Thoris' planet, Mars, um, they saw that there was an incoming ship. And they're like, wow, this is crazy. We haven't had an incoming ship in quite some time. Um, you know, let's go check this out. So they go and they present it before the Jet Act that this is going on, and they want to send, um, send some troops to be there waiting when the shuttle lands, which makes perfect sense to me. I mean, you're basically being invaded by who knows what. Definitely want to have some military presence. But, of course, in typical Dejah Thoris fashion, um, she steps up and basically convinces her grandfather why it would just be such a horrible idea to send the military, and instead they should send her, Dejah Thoris, because she's so amazing. So, of course, her grandfather agrees, and she goes there. Um, the spaceship lands, and lo and behold, it's Vampirilla, who has horrible bloodlust because she's been trapped in her spacecraft for who knows how long, and doesn't have, didn't bring a sufficient amount of blood, and was just mad with bloodlust. It looks like for a moment, um, she saves Dejah Thoris from one of the white apes, and then it looks like for a moment that she's about to attack Dejah Thoris, but oh, oh, in that moment, her mind suddenly clears, and they become besties, basically. So where I say the main theme is kind of like, um, like a man versus nature theme is that the whole reason why Vampirilla embarked upon this journey um, into space is because her planet that she comes from, which is all full of vampires, apparently on that planet, the rivers and the oceans and everything is all full of blood, and that sustains the vampire's life force. Okay, that makes sense. We all know the legends of vampires. Totally makes sense to me. Um, but because of what we can only assume is probably some sort of climate change, global warming type situation, um, the rivers dry up, and all of the vampires are forced to turn to synthetic blood in order to sustain themselves. 
This is where we find out that Vampirella, not only being very sexy, a vampire can read people's minds in order to immediately pick up their language, is also like their most gifted scientist on their planet and was leading up this fight to create this synthetic blood force. Um, but apparently a lot of the vampires were having allergic reactions to it and were dying off and she single-handedly created a spacecraft that could get through their crazy electromagnetic thing that's formed around their planet and no spacecrafts have been able to leave for who knows how long, but she alone created a spacecraft that was able to leave the planet and went out in search for another planet with an ample amount of blood. Hence, she ends up landing on Dejah Thoris's planet. So, Dejah Thoris, of course, if you know anything about the Warlord of, Mar uh, the Warlord of Mars, the Princess of Mars, um, any of the Dejah Thoris comics, this kind of mirrors what's going on on Mars as well, where her planet is having a similar type of catastrophic event going on with water. So of course Dejah Thoris feels an immediate resonance with this. Oh my gosh, that's what's going on here, but we've been able to develop technology to you know, create water, to sustain life, and I'm sure that my people can help create technology to help out your people too. Oh wow, that's so great, says Vampirella. And you know what? That's even better because I got this beacon when I was in the middle of, you know, space on my way here that, you know, everybody else on the planet stole my plans, thought it was a really good idea, and they took off behind me as well. Also pack insufficient amount of synthetic blood and they should be arriving here pretty soon. Yeah, this isn't some sort of just perfectly set up trope, right? This basically takes us into our story. Um, I won't go too much more in depth about it, but it unfolds from there, and I think that you get the hint of what the main theme is. Um, as far as the characters go, our main characters are Dejah Thoris and Vampirella. And I have to say, I don't like either of these characters. And as the comic has progressed, I like them even less. Both of these characters are your typical Mary Sue characters. They are just the most perfect at everything for absolutely no reason, just because. All of the men apparently on their planets are bumbling buffoons who can't do anything at all on their own. Dejah Thoris is constantly having to step in and override her grandfather, who is the leader, override his decisions, step all over the military, is convinced that she's just the smartest person, she's the only one that can handle any job because princess, basically, is what it comes down to. And it just makes her so unlikable. I mean, it's like anytime there's the slightest bit, bit of tension and I feel like maybe something is gonna go wrong for her, no, no, through her magical ways of being Dejah Thoris, it works out and she's the only one that can have the solution. Everybody else around her is just a moron. Case in point, even when she finally gets the blessing to go out and meet the spacecraft when it arrives, she's sitting there and has to throw in the comment of, well, you know, those astronomers sure did horrible calculations and were not even anywhere near how, you know, how long it was going to be until the spacecraft arrived. I should have just done it myself. We can barely even call them scientists. They're just such morons. Only me, Dejah Thoris, can do it. And it's like... God, it just really makes me not like her, you know? Like, I'm all for having strong female characters, but this is just too much. She's not even strong. She is like, can do no wrong. Everybody just bends to her will. She's constantly manipulating, ev manipulating any, she, but she's constantly manipulating everybody. Why do we even need other people on the planet? Apparently Dejah Thoris can just do everything by herself. And it makes you wonder too, in a society where the military forces and the Jeddak, who's their leader, are so weak that Dejah Thoris constantly have, 
has to be stepping in, how are they able to accomplish anything? Because it's a pretty freaking advanced society when you read these comics. Vampirilla, she still is perfect at everything and can do everything wonderfully. She is a vampire, I'll give her that. That makes it a little bit more forgivable because as we know from just kind of stories and legends of vampires, okay, yes, they can, they are mortal, they live for a very long time, they usually are very strong. I mean, all of that stuff does kind of make sense, but on top of all that, just some of the stuff about, oh, she's also like the head scientist on her planet. She was the only one that could build this spaceship. She just is so perfect at everything that she does. And it's just, you know, having the team up of these two characters, it's just boring. You know, like I don't, I'm not even worried for one minute that this isn't gonna work out at the end of this comic series. Um, in this particular comic series, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's also very strong feminist tones. Some of that stems from the fact that Dejah Thoris and Vampirella are your very, very, very strong, overbearing female characters that just can do no wrong. But beyond that, the comic also finds moments and ways in which it can just like throw in this commentary that is so out of place and adds nothing to the story. I'm gonna actually read you this one part because when I read it, I was just like, why did that even need to be there? You know, it makes absolutely no sense. Um, so this is after Vampirella and Dejah Thoris have met up and Dejah Thoris takes Vampirella back to meet her grandfather and kind of plead the case and ask for them to come up with some technology to save Vampirella's people who are, remember, on their way here, like thousands of hungry bloodlust vampires on their way here to Basum. And they're standing there, they're in the council room. We've had some dramatic scenes where Vampirella has attacked some guards. You know, things got hairy there for a minute. They want to send her to the River Is, And oh, lo and behold, only Dejah Thoris can go with her. And we have this scene where, you know, um, <clears throat> Dejah Thoris is sticking up for Vampirilla's actions when her grandfather is saying that he doesn't want to help out. And the guards are getting all angry, getting up in her face, like, hey, she's attacking us. Um, so her grand, so Dejah Thoris's grandfather, the Jeddak, the leader of the people, says, stand down, Gartas. It's all right. This woman was simply upset. It's to be expected with females. And then Vampirilla jumps in and says, oh, yes, of course. Only a female would be upset when her entire race was being condemned to death. And then, of course, he has to correct himself. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I am. But, you know, you have to understand. I don't want to risk my people. And it's just like that didn't add anything. That little segue of, oh, only a female can act, would act like that. What, what are you talking about? How dare you say that about females? It's like that had no place. It didn't even fit with the scene. It was ridiculous. And he shouldn't have to defend his decision not to send his people to be slaughtered. For a leader, that's a pretty, um, I mean, that's a pretty good decision to make. You know, why would you send your whole entire armed forces up against a bunch of hungry vampires? Seems like a pretty smart decision in my eyes. There's also other incidences um, throughout these comics and even in the first two where we have scenes like that that just seem so out of place and it's just kind of there to like prop up, oh yay, females, which I'm a female, okay? But still, I don't need that in my comics. It's garbage, okay? I don't need that. I just want a good story. I want good characters who develop growth and have problems and are not perfect. Characters that are too perfect are not interesting because we don't really find ourselves rooting for them because we know that they're not going to fail whatsoever. Um, the art style of these comics, it's good. I mean, it's pretty realistic looking. There's not really a ton of action sequences. Um, the action sequences that are there though, they're not so over the top filled with graphic detail that it's hard to follow what's going on and it just looks like a jumble of squiggly lines. Um, 
it, if anything, I'd say that the graphic and the art style is a little bit sloppy. You'll notice from frame to frame, sometimes the character's face faces kind of change, look a little bit awkward. I think this is most pronounced with Dejah Thoris. I'm not sure if the artist just didn't really have a good grasp of maybe how she was supposed to look, but I know like her facial expressions kind of were a little bit off sometimes. And from scene to scene, I felt like you know, it, it just, it looked odd. Um, Vampirella, of course, looks very sexy. There's lots of shots from her of her from the back, so you get to see her very curvaceous behind, which is fine. Um, you know, I think it looks it looks really nice. It's well done. Both of these, sorry, uh, both of these covers have the typical bait and switch that you will pretty much always get from a Dejah Thoris comic. And what I mean by that is that Dejah Thoris is depicted wearing this very skimpy golden armor suit. Even on even the De Dejah Thoris series, that's what she's wearing. This is her standard cover costume, but then we get inside of the comic, and she's not wearing this at all. She's wearing another, um, I'll have to put this up on the screen because I don't think you'll be able to see it if I just hold it up. Um, she's wearing more armor covering. Um, it covers, you know, her stomach area usually. She's got some big pauldrons. She usually has a huge giant gorget covering her neck. Um, she has like a silly little crown thing that I guess is supposed to be a helmet. Um, I don't know why they do this in Dejah Thoris comics because everybody else on her planet is very scantily clad. Even in these um, scenes with her, we don't see her with any other females, granted, but her standing in the hall with all of the male characters, all of the warriors, who these are the warriors. These are supposedly the people who are going out fighting, and they're dressed like they're Spartans from 300. They're wearing nothing. They're not wearing armor. It, it just, it's really out of place. I, I don't know why they do this. Um, feminism? I don't know. But that's your typical bait and switch, so if you're getting this for the eye candy, well, you have Vampirella, and she looks really good. Uh, let's see. Beyond that, I feel like this is mostly just a cash grab of putting some sexy women on the cover, teaming up some heroines who traditionally kind of are eye candy, and oh, we're gonna put them together. Ooh, it's gonna be so exciting. But does this story have much substance? Do I feel like I'm really like gaining anything or getting enthralled in the story or care about the characters? No, not at all. I don't know. Maybe it'll get better as the series goes on. We'll see. Um, I'll be back at you with the next two though, and we'll see if maybe the story has gotten better. Maybe if our fearless female Mary Sue's can actually encounter some danger. Until then, um, I'll see you guys later. Make sure to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more. And please leave me some comments down below um, to get some dialogue going. Have a good day. Bye.